Oh, so many cracks that can't be good for me. Hey friends, today we're gonna to talk about a shoot that I did recently at a barber shop. We're gonna look at some BTS footage. We're going to look at the lenses I use, some of the photos, and talk a little bit about how I go about doing a commercial shoot in a business or an environment that is in business that is happening all around me and, and how I make sure that I don't get in people's ways and, and things that you wanna think about when you're doing, let's say your first commercial shoot. So, yes, now. So I was contacted by a local barbershop here in Kitchener, Ontario. It's called the Green Room Barbershop. I've known the guys there a long time. I've got my hair cut there just the past little while. I started going there because I was tired of driving all the way to Toronto to get my hair cut. And before that, I was growing my hair out. So I never really got it cut. And before that was COVID. And so I grew my hair out then too. I had long hair for a while. It was awesome. Now I have floppy hair because there's nothing in it yet. So they contacted me because they're looking to kind of revamp their social media a little bit, get some more stuff on their website, and uh, they're celebrating their fifth anniversary soon. So we're gonna be making an actual video for them, which should be a lot of fun. I'll make sure that gets up here on the page too. So we picked a time where I could be there. We picked a five hour block, which is, Spoiler alert, too much time. You do not need to be at a business for five hours, that's crazy. But it was also a really important amount of time for me to be there because it allowed me to get to know everybody and because we're gonna be making a video soon, I really did want to feel comfortable with this group of people. So spending a whole day there and actually seeing the operation was really helpful because it helped me to see how this business is structured and, and I actually was able to pull a lot of ideas for the video that we're gonna make in the future. So five hours is probably four hours too long for just like a regular shoot day uh, for something like this, where we were hoping to get maybe 50 images and headshots. We ended up with like 200 images with headshots total. But I do think it was a really helpful way for us to all get to know each other. So let's talk a little bit about the gear that we use. Mainly I was shooting on the EOS R5, which is what we're filming on right now with this bad boy. So this is the Samyang 85 millimeter F1.4 for RF mount. It doesn't exist anymore because as you probably know if you shoot Canon or even if you don't, Canon doesn't let other companies make lenses for their RF mount anymore, which is super cool and probably the reason why if I do change from Canon, it's gonna be that. Borrow this from my buddy, Tim. It's on a long-term loan. The other thing I use is the 50 mil 1.8. This is just a nice, easy lens to have. I use the 35 mil that I have on, uh, on the camera right now a little bit, but it was mostly this 50 mil and the 85 mil. Uh, on top of that, I also shot film. This is my go-to film camera right now. It's the EOS 1N from Canon. What's cool about this camera is that it's EF mount, which means that I can use EF lenses on this as well as use them on my RF with an adapter and I can have sort of like one, uh, one symbiotic relationship between my film and my digital. On that, I was shooting with this. This is the 28 mil f 1.8 Canon EF. I love this lens. I did use it for some of the shots with the R5 as well and it was, Beautiful. This lens is quickly becoming like my favorite all-time lens. So to, to sort of finish off the gear stuff, why did I use the 85 mil so much? It was actually a decently tight space. It's not a huge shop. So 85 mil might feel like kind of a strange choice, but the reason I did that is because the shop itself was in operation. It wasn't like I was the only person there. And I knew that, you know, getting super close to someone as they're getting their hair cut with a camera, doesn't always feel comfortable. Like a 35 1.4 or even like a tw the 28 mil would have been pretty fun to use in some of those scenarios to get up nice and close. But the reality was I knew that these people were just coming to get their haircut. They weren't like signing up for a photo shoot. And so I wanted to make sure that I could be far enough away and still get good like subject isolation and everything. And that's where the 85 really comes in clutch. Let's talk a little bit about my approach when I'm doing a commercial shoot in a place that I haven't shot before. First and foremost, I don't just usually pull out the camera and start shooting the second I get there. First thing I did, and I think this is important, I didn't start by just taking photos of people. I took some photos of the space, I took some photos of some of the uh, merchandise and some of the stuff they had for sale, some photos out front, just to get people used to the idea that, oh, there's a camera here. Because if I pull out a camera, like that's a pretty big lens, the 85 1.4. If I pull that out the second I get there and I'm just like in people's faces taking their photos, it can feel a little bit aggressive, right? And, and the barbers are cool with it, but I think for the customers, it can feel a little weird. So by starting with just taking pictures of your surroundings, I think you're kind of like easing people into the idea. That would be my first tip. Start 
simple and, uh, and don't go for the photos of people right away. The second thing I would say is really think about the fact that if these are all gonna be used for social media, which is usually what people are shooting for these days, they're shooting for website or social media. In social media, when people are trying to use these images, they're gonna have to use them over and over. Like you wanna create enough work that they have a lot to pull from. And that means having like not just quantity of images, but having variation in the images. So making sure that for each barber you have, you know, five or six different shots from different angles so that there's lots for them to pull from. Uh, we actually did a great thing where we got them halfway through the day to change so it looked like they were there for two days, which is, is ideal. How do we make sure that it doesn't feel like the same photo taken over and over and over? So every time they have a new client, making sure you're snapping photos with that client so that you're getting lots of different stuff there making sure you're getting close-up details, shooting their workstation, shooting like the guitars hanging on the walls, shooting everything to make it feel like they can pull from a lot of different things so that they're not always posting the same photo of somebody cutting someone's hair. Translate that to like a coffee shop, making sure that you're not just constantly taking photos of people like making coffee. You're also getting photos of the pastries, you're getting photos of the finished coffees, you're getting photos of customers in the line, you're getting photos of the outside. Translate that to a restaurant. You're not just getting photos of the dish itself over and over and over. You're getting photos of, you know, like the overall space, you're getting photos of like the servers bringing out the food, you're getting photos, you know, you get what I mean. Just making sure that you're thinking about like, okay, what are all the steps of service within this business? What are all the products within this business? And making sure that each of those, you're getting interesting angles and unique perspectives for those multiple different ways. Probably the most fun thing we were doing there was portraits or headshots for, the, for all the staff there. And that was for them to use on their website or whatever else they really wanted to use it on. And the way we did it, we did a vertical, we did a horizontal, and then I did a, like a panoramic image, kind of like a, um, if you've heard of the Brenizer method, where basically, you, uh, you lock in your exposure and shutter speed and everything like that and, and your focus and white balance. Everything's locked down into the same uh, settings and you take a center photograph of them kind of head on and then you take a photo from like kind of here to here and a photo from here to here and then you merge them all at the end. And what that does is it creates almost like uh, a shallower depth of field than you would normally have with an f1.4. So I had the 85 wide open, took that shot, and I'm really happy with the results of those. It was simple, but it just, I think they look really nice. We also did a group photo at lunch. These are always a little bit tricky. You're, they're not gonna be the most inspired or interesting photo, but to be honest, they're probably the one that's gonna mean some of the most to them because it's all of them together. And uh, I want that to be something that's really quick, really easy, but really fun. And so when I'm doing those photos, I am just snapping as many as I can so that I have lots of images to pull from in case I need to swap some faces or whatever between images because somebody was blinking but everybody else looks great or whatever. Usually what I'll do is I'll get them to do like one where they're all smiling, one where they're all laughing, and then one where they're kind of serious. And so usually the smiling one is simple. I just say like, pretend this is for your mom, so be happy. And I don't know, usually that works. And I don't know what everyone's relationship with their mom is, but you get it. Uh, the second one where they're all laughing, usually I'll say like, okay, everybody do like a super awkward laugh like the most awkward laugh you can do. And they do it, and usually after like two or three seconds, that turns into a real laugh, and then everyone's laughing, and it's, it's a joyous little time. And then for the more serious one, I'll usually be like, all right, this is the album cover, like everybody like look intense, look hard, look badass, like this is your, this is your album cover. And that's it, super simple, and you get it out, you get them back to what they're there to do, which is to cut hair, uh, and that's it. So that shoot was about 48 hours ago. I just delivered the images. I try and get this kind of stuff out as quick as I can because ultimately it's for social media. It is meant to be something that can be shared quickly and that they can enjoy. I also, it's my first time shooting for them and I think it's important to get off on a really good foot. And so I gave them more images than we had planned and I did it in a way where I could just get them to them super quickly. I'm not saying that's how you have to do everything and you don't wanna set expectations you can't keep up with. But what I said to them is typically I get images from this kind of a shoot out within seven days. If I have time, I'll do it this week. The thing is I knew I'd have time and I knew I could get them to them in like 48 hours and I knew that that would be a nice thing to do. I deliver everything in pick time, which is my go-to for galleries. It's great because you can separate it by, they call it scenes, but the way I did it is I separated it by product shots, headshots or portraits, uh, cuts. So we took some photos of people who were getting their hair cut, like the kind of like final haircut. Um, and then 
basically like shop photos. So that's just like the photos that they'll use day to day when they're posting on social media. So when they go through the gallery, they can just pick and choose what they need. They have them all living there and it's really, really simple. If you don't use some kind of online gallery, I definitely encourage it. I still do often send things through things like WeTransfer and stuff like that. If it's just a few photos or one longer video or something. But there's something that feels way more professional about having like your own online gallery. I really like PicTime. It's not overly expensive. It works well and it gets me everything I need for my clients. And there's also a lot of automation with shop built into that. So you can actually like sell things, which is nice. I even just use it like this Thanksgiving, I took some photos of my family and I just put up a gallery there for my family. So you can see in the images, that's my workflow. That's how I go through like a typical commercial shoot uh, in a place that I've never shot before. Some tips on how I would go about it if I were you and yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have a great day, peace.